One in five people in the United States today has a disability. But that's not what we're known for. Stephen Hawking has ALS, but that's not what he's known for. Instead, for being a world renowned physicist. Try saying that five times fast. <laughs> How many of you know that Albert Einstein was autistic? Yeah. But that's not what he's known for. He's known for having the most ingenious mind in the world to this date. <laughs> and then there's Stevie, Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder is legally blind, but that's not what he's known for. Instead, for touching our hearts and souls with his profound music and lyrics. And then there's me. I'm the girl, not the fish. You see, on paper, I am one of those five with a disability. As you can tell, I'm shaking. I'm nervous. But I was born with a condition called cerebral palsy. So I shake all the freaking time. <laughs> and I walk with a limp, and my muscles fast. But here's what I want you to know. That like Stephen, Stevie, Albert, and myself, we all have one very important thing in common. And no, that is not the fact that we have a disability. It's the fact that we have chosen to live a life able by ditching our disability, or as I like to call it, ditching our dis, and becoming more able. And tonight, I'm here to give you my four key steps towards becoming able. A, B, L, E. So step number one, we're going to deal with your attitude. How many of you in here know somebody and you thought to yourself, that person has a really bad attitude? Now raise your hand, I saw you, raise your hand if you thought that their attitude prevented them from doing something. Right. Keep your hand up if that person has ever been you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The biggest disability we will ever face in our lifetime is going to be a bad attitude. Tom Dempsey was the kicker for the 1969 New Orleans Saints. But he had no toes. Yeah. And do you ever think that he ever thought, I really want to become a football player, but I'm not going to be able to do it. I had no toes. Why should I even try? Michael J. Fox, one of my heroes. Do you think that when he got diagnosed with Parkinson's, that he said to himself, ah, screw this. It's going to kill me. I'm never going to be able to do anything again. No, absolutely not. These are two completely different people, but they all had one thing in common. They had the attitude it took to understand that if anything good was ever going to come out of the current situation, that they were going to have to get rid of any and all doubt that was telling them that they could not. That's the key to changing your attitude. Get rid of that doubt, that little voice in your head that's telling you that you can't. Because guess what? When you get rid of that doubt, and when you change your attitude, you're going to become your own hero. As Christopher Reeves once said, a hero is someone who, in spite of weakness, doubt, or not always how, and knowing the right answers, goes ahead and overcomes anyway. Change your attitude by getting rid of your doubt, and you become your own hero. And you want to know what the biggest inhibitor of a good attitude in life is? Baggage. The being enable. Dump that stupid baggage, right? 
So how many of you in here has ever packed a suitcase? I did two days ago. <laughs> and we stop it, and we stop it, and we stop it, and then we try to close it, and then we do, and then comes the moment of truth, right, when you have to pick it up. I can't tell you how many times I've done this. I lifted the suitcase off my bed only to drop it on my freaking toe. God, does that hurt. <laughs> and in the course of five to 10 seconds, I said every cuss word imaginable. And I even made up a few of my own. When I was in high school, I played varsity golf. Yeah, golf, hand eye coordination. <laughs> yeah. And all throughout my freshman and sophomore year, I carried my golf bag on the course. Because I thought to myself, you know, if those girls can do it, then why can't I? But it wasn't until my last tournament of my sophomore year that I truly realized why I had been carrying my golf bag. And as I walked out to my golf coach at the very last tournament and I handed her my scorecard, she looked at it and she said, Marina, you played well. I'm like, well, I am on the varsity golf team, I should. But then she looked at it again, she said, but these last four holes, you didn't do too hard. Why, why didn't you do well? And I looked at her, uh, I was just really tired, Coach Gail. I was really tired. And she looked at me and she put her hand on my shoulder and she said, I want you to go home. And I want you to think about why you're so tired. So I did, mainly because I knew if I didn't, she would kill me. I did, I went home and I thought about what she said. I finally came to the realization of why I came carrying my golf bag. It was the fact that I wanted to hide my disability instead of getting rid of it. I wanted to hide my disability. And from that moment on, I rode in a golf cart. I literally dumped my bag, 12 pound freaking bag, I put it on a golf cart. And I went on to play two years of collegiate level golf at Adrian College. No, no, no. <laughs> Think about it. What is your baggage in life? What is that one thing in your life that is preventing you from being able? Dump it. Golf is a great sport. A little fashion modeling before the round. That's like my freshman year. God, I'm old. <laughs> but guess what? Even when we had the right attitude and we learned to dump our baggage, we still had those pesky little things in life that we like to call limits. Yeah. Do you think that when Michael J. Fox was diagnosed with Parkinson's, directors, fellow actors, people, weren't telling him that he will never act again, that he's done, he'll die in a couple of years anyway? And do you think that when Tom Dempsey tried out for football, there weren't people on the sidelines snickering at his deformities, calling him weird, he'll never be able to make it in this, in, in this NFL? Here's my point. The biggest limits that we will ever put on ourselves in our lifetime is when we start believing that what others tell us we cannot do is true, right? It's true. But that's okay, because I have the key to eliminating those limits. And it's one simple word, and I know each of you have it. Confidence. My favorite quote of all time came from a beautiful woman by the name of Eleanor Roosevelt. She once said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Guess what? When you start believing that what other people tell you you cannot do is true, you are automatically giving them consent to make you feel inferior, to make you feel like you cannot, that you are unable. The key 
to helping you eliminate your limits is confidence. Be confident in yourself. Because when you begin to develop confidence, you'll begin to eliminate your limits. And when you do that, you begin to develop hope. Hope. Hope that someday you will become able. And when you begin to believe so strongly in that hope, you begin to develop dreams. And when you begin to develop dreams, guess what the E in able stands for? You'll be able to envision your best. Now, when I was a junior in college, I met this extraordinary guy by the name of Mark Elliott. Not only is he extremely good looking, if I didn't have a boyfriend, that's besides the point. He's my hero. And I remember sitting down with him, and I remember him telling me at the time that he got kicked off a bus for calling a black person the N-word. Mm -hmm. And I remember the time that he yelled out, bomb, bomb, in an airport. I saw some of you jump. It's okay. And you may be wondering, you know, why the hell would you look up to this guy? Well, you see, Mark Elliott had a condition, you got it, it's called Tourette's Syndrome. And Tourette's Syndrome is a, a condition where you say and do involuntary things. And he described it perfectly. He described it as that itch that you just have to scratch, otherwise it won't go away. So he had to say the end word, he had to say bomb. And I thought to myself, you know, Mark, how are you ever going to be able to envision your best when you can't even control yourself? I did, I asked him that. And that night, when I went to see him in an auditorium speak, when you walked into the auditorium, he gave little cue cards or little note cards to every other person that walked in the auditorium. And on the note cards were these words, words. And they would have to yell out these words in the middle of his speech to kind of represent threat syndrome. So while I'm sitting in the front row, drooling, because he's incredibly hot, <laughs> but also, anyway, envisioning and loving what he was saying, I would hear people yell out, penis. Get off the stage, you suck. Excuse me? Or stupid, you suck. But guess what? By the end of the speech, I couldn't hear any of those words anymore. I didn't hear anybody who yelled out anything anymore. And I finally learned the key to envisioning my best. And it's, again, one word. Tolerance. You have to be tolerant of not only yourself, but other people. Gets, because guess what? People are always going to judge you. It's a fact of human nature. But when you learn to be tolerant of those people, and not give them the satisfaction of listening to what they say about you, you automatically learn to be tolerant of yourself. And when you be tolerant of yourself, you can automatically begin to envision your best. And I think it's absolutely perfect that we do these talks on a stage in front of an audience. And as cliche as this may sound, life is one big freaking stage. Because when you're on a stage, you're vulnerable. You're vulnerable. People can see you, people can see your disability, but guess what? People will only ever see your disability if you think that you even have one. So say it with me. The first step to becoming able is to check your what? Yes, yes. say it louder. Yes. yes. And then dump your freaking what? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Eliminate your, eliminate your, and then what can you do? 
Yes, envision my best. I'm not here to point out your flaws. I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. I'm here to simply say this, that I know that living with a disability can be one heck of a ride with ups and downs. But I've learned that by ditching my dis and becoming more able, that living without a disability can be one hell of a life. My name is Marina Morris. I've ditched my dis, I've ditched my cerebral palsy, and now I no longer have to envision my best because right now, on this stage, I'm living it. Thank you.